We stand together in victory atop a pile of our slain adversaries. With our slicey actions, we... we won. It's over now, no one's gonna try this again. There's a big sample size that we've murdered sitting under our feet here. Angry mathematicians roll up with a crossbow, uh, but then hesitate and run back over to their car. Jot down some calculations, then they're like, I'm good. Bye, fellas, and drive off. I was born a vegan. I, it, look, it's hard to chew celery with just gums, but these are the challenges that make us who we are. I had to learn at an early age, life's not gonna be easy. Nothing's gonna just be given to you, and when it is, there's gonna be gum blood. Oh, I'm so... Sad, itchy, or embarrassed. I can't go on. Just frickin' go on. Just make the choice to go on. Oh no, this thing that I have always wanted is still ten yards away, but I, I, I feel like I want to go and s have a, a sit down on one of those fluffy pigeons, the biggins that they've been anesthetizing into furniture down at the whatever an esplanade is. It's ten yards. It's a few footsteps. It's, go get your prize. You can sit on the pigeons after. I'm not going to live my life like some sort of a victim here. I'm not going to allow myself to become one of those people who's like, Oh, and in my nightmares, there's a stalk of celery with my father's face. No, I'm going to go out there and do what I have to do. If it hurts, if it stings, if it itches, I'm going to deal with those things later. Why relent the winning near the goal, Johnny boy, Mr. Illustrations? Thomas Edison wrote these brewery maps during his blue period to help you understand the central theme of all brewing is that it's one and done. You can't take the grain, ferment it, then change your mind. Oh, I kind of want this to be bread now. Is there room in your coven? For one more slicey little witch? If I could take all these bodies that I have slain, find just the right angle for a selfie to commemorate this bloodbath, and I go to your coven and you're like, Oh, our space auntie has given us a new collection of diamond foot sculptures. Let us give thanks unto the toenail, for the toenail shall forever grow, as shall flourish the crops. And if I show you the picture and say, Look, I get this feels like a peace-loving kind of group. Think you'll be real impressed with what I've done here, though. Would you let me in? I I'm looking for a new way to fill a couple hours every weekend. All of my adversaries have fallen to my blade, and honestly, that was a thing to do. So, there's, you know, a vacancy in the plan book right now, I'm looking for alternatives. Maybe you just need a coven bouncer. So if that one dumpy looking chick with the tooth made of rubber, ah, I think you told me her name was Ferelda, I wasn't really listening, I was just kind of planning out this pitch in my head. So get this bada 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 show wing throw the ball right down the middle, I could make sure Ferelda doesn't come back. Trying to cause a scene, squirting mascara out of her ass, and telling everybody that you're a bunch of cops. I'll be there next Saturday. Thank you for the opportunity. In the meantime, I just gotta hold on to my own side, because it keeps trying to fall open. Like there's a hatch, and then a bunch of happy small skull creatures will flap out, saying, Thank you, Gravitrex, and then go away. I want those inside. Gravitrex, yeah, he's their buddy. They went to grade school together. They were on the socks team. 
wore foot coverage all winter long. Bronze medal. I don't know what it's a bronze medal for. They just keep telling me bronze medal. Hey, you know what, Gravitrex? Pull open my side. You can have these skull creatures. I've got my new coven friends. And I think that like, just as long as potatoes don't become my new love interest in the sequel, I'm on board for anything. My agent wrote that into the contract, and I know there was an underlying theme of uh, potato amory in the original, but like, let Tom Cruise handle the tuber smoochin', and then my lawyer won't have to break out the tear gas again. It's, it's like you're not even listening. It's like I have to be your wet nap scrubbing away all the falsehoods from your angry little face. Just relax, buddy. I got this. Open up your mind. Let my words tunnel inside of it, rearrange some things, and then you'll come out fully insane and give me anything I want for the couple of weeks until they lock you away in a jail cell for being a danger to light switches. They're just weeping electricity when you pass by. You haven't done anything to them, but they know you're gonna. They call the light cops shiny light cops all oh, with their cuffs they will encumber you and redistribute your equilibrium in such a fashion as to tie you to a dog real big dog too one of those jazz dogs with the alan rickman tattoo and you had better just embrace your fate because fate is here Looking real lonely, looking for a hug, and if you don't give it a hug, all the accusations start flying on the internet. Oh, are they breaking up? Is fate and y'all finally calling it quits? And then you have to look your public in the eye and say, listen, I don't go in for predestination. I believe we forge our own path through this life. And it is fine if you do not share that viewpoint, but you will have to make peace with the... And then you make a grunting noise as a knife slips into your side. And who's behind you? But a dreamy little priest? Oh, why'd he go into the clergy? He should have been a model for the GQ... Instead, decided it was time to ask Jesus what's up, and Jesus goes, I don't like this speech. End it. So he did. He trusts his Lord what kind of priest could behold the visage of God eternal and say, You sure about that one, buddy? You try to punch your problems away, but spores leak out of what's left of the broken nose. The problems reproduce by making us lash out. We reproduce, and it causes problems. Like, at the absolute least, there's overpopulation. Absolute most, sometimes your kid turns out to be a dingbat, and you gotta go around with dung boot kid. And your friends, oh, hey, let's take a look at this here offspring of yours. And you're like, oh, do we have to? It's, it's gross and inadequate. Then your child steps out of the shadows, looking at the ground like it knows it's supposed to. But they say, hey, what's your name? Buckchooth? And Buckchooth is like, how did you know? And they say, uh, something, you just kind of look like a Buckchooth. <laughs>